Welcome back live to the Great Western Forum. Chris Marlowe and Paul Sunderland getting ready for match two. Coca-Cola going up against Il Massagero. And if you know anything about volleyball, you know that Karch Karai and Steve Timmons played for Il Massagero this year. Karch Karai, well, he is the best player in the world, perhaps the most famous player in the world. And until this year, he'd never been to Italy. What's it like to play in Italy? This is what Karch said. It's kind of crazy over there. It's been fun. The fans are... Uh, Fanatical. They go nuts. They're ready to kill us when we lose, and they're just uh, hoisting us on, our sho on their shoulders when we win. So it's really fun just because there is such a high intensity level. And you get, when you play away, you get whistled all the time. They're down on you the whole way, and that's when it's really fun to win when everybody's down on you. And it's fun to have our home crowd supporting us, too. The fans are intense in Italy. And now Karch talking to his coach, Danielle Ricci, and was there pressure on him? Talk about intense pressure for a young coach when Il Messagero got Karch and Steve Timmons. That's I mean, a Maylock season, yes, not a Maylock moment. You have to win. <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of pressure. So much money and prestige on the line. I asked Steve Timmons what the, uh, the situation was really like in Italy with professional sports. He says there are about eight warring billionaires. Some are in the shipping business, <laughs> some are in the automobile industry, and some are in newspapers, as is El Massagero, and they just all hate each other. It's like Trump versus uh, Steinbrenner. But they all have one thing in common. They want to win when they play sports against each other. Absolutely. That seems to be the common denominator. The big redhead, someone asked me how tall he is. Well, if you measure from the top of his head to his shoes, he's 6'5", but if you measure to the top of his hair, to the floor, he's 6'8", on a good night. So getting set for match two. The warm-up's taking a little longer than usual. And getting ready for Team Coca-Cola, a new sponsor for Team Cup Volleyball. We're great, glad to have them with us as they get set to meet what you would think would be the favorite team. But if there's a night to knock off Il Massagero, Coke has a great chance to do it, don't you think? Well, I think you want to get Il Massagero right now. It takes a while to adjust to the unique format and rules of Team Cup Volleyball. Blocking with four or five players at the net, really specializing with your small back row players. And, and particularly in transition, hitters remembering that they're in fact in the back row. So I think Coca-Cola has got a very good opportunity here tonight. Also, they've got a very good ball club. Okay, we're just about set to introduce the players for you, and to do that, let's go down now to Sam Lagana. Sam? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our second match of tonight's Great Western Team Cup Volleyball Confrontation, pitting Il Misichero against Team Coca-Cola. Let's meet Il Misichero. The captain, wearing number six, Steve Timmons. Number two, Gianni Montanari. Number three, Gianmarco Venturi. Number four, Giovanni Mambelli. Number five, Fabio Rulo. Number seven, Giovanni Enrichilio. Number 10, Vigor Bovalenta. Number 13, Mario Fangareggi. And number 15, Karch Kira. The coach for El Mezzicaro is Daniela Ricci. And now let's meet Team Coca-Cola. The captain, number 22, Stingen Smith. Wearing number one, Bill Stetson. Wearing number two, Dave Saunders. Wearing number three, Tim Hovland. Wearing number four, Troy Tanner. <laughs> Wearing number five, Doug Partee. Sporting number nine, Roger Clark. And in number 11, Mike Blancher. 
the coach for Team Coca-Cola, Bob Yoder. Okay, so Bob Yoder, the head coach for Coca-Cola, and once again, Danielle Ricci, the head coach for Il Massagero. Bob Yoder, the former head coach at USC, won a national championship there, and uh, regarded as a very, very good coach. He actually played with Bill Stetson, number one, who will be in the starting lineup, we would assume. The problem for Yoder might be who to put out there. Well, he's got a pretty good group of players. I think you start with Stetson. You want Hovland, Blanchard, and Partee certainly in there together. But the choice is, do you go with Saunders and Tanner passing, or do you get Smith into that mix as well? Well, certainly I think the deepest team perhaps is Coca-Cola, and Bob uh, Yoder might have to sit down Sinjin Smith or not. Let's see. It looks like Smith is in the starting lineup. Okay, so here we go. Il Massagero coming over from Ravenna, Italy. And we'll try to give you the players uh, as soon as we figure out who they are starting. Now, a number of their uh, players are involved in their zone tournament, the European zone tournament. And so they are not here, but we can tell you the players that are here. Number two is Gianni Montanari. He's number two. He'll be in the middle. Number four is Giovanni Mambelli. He'll start on the left outside. Giovanni Ericchiello, a player that you and I played against, Paul, is number seven. And Bulo, of course, the highly regarded setter, number five. So here we go. Best two out of three games. The first two games, if you just joined us, are to 30 points. It is point per play scoring. And expect the Italians uh, in the lineup to be very confused at the opening belt. Well, they're all looking to Timmons and Kirai right now, but they've got four blockers up there, so they had a, a good team meeting. Now, I would expect, if I were betting them, and I know it's illegal, but I would bet on Coca-Cola in this match because I think uh, Karch's team is going to have a little difficulty figuring out who's where and when. They're going to be spending so much time wondering if they're in the front row or the back row, they're going to lose track on the scoreboard. Once again, only three players in the front row can spike. They can spike or block, but any amount of players can move up and block. But if you're in the back row, you can block, but you can't hit. Now, if you think that's confusing to us, come from another country when you don't speak English and see how you do. Vulo, back set. And the ball spiked out of bounds. How serious is this match for Il Massagero? Oh, I think it's very serious. It's their first appearance ever outside of Europe. They practiced earlier today. I think they're taking this competition very, very seriously. Good pass, Vulo. And Eric Chielo thunders one down. Giovanni Eric Chielo. I can remember when we played them in Denver on the Italian tour way back in 19, I believe it was 82, Paul, when I just rejoined the team. And I remember stuffing him once very nicely on the outside. It's not how he told it. <laughs> well, it's the only time I can remember blocking anybody, except you. Well, we played against each other for 20 years. You got to get lucky every once in a while. Three to two is our score. Once again, you're not really rotating around in a circle, so there may be some problems trying to figure out who serves and when. You just know who you go after. Now serving Giovanni Mambelli. They go with the jumper. Saunders. And Timmons takes. Nice play up by Tanner. Smith. Bulo can dish it around. He can off the head of Eric Chielo, and it goes over. Coke on the attack. And some good rallying going on. Eric Hill is blocked. Partia Tanner. Troy Tanner played overseas this past year, as did Doug Partee. Both exceptional blockers on the outside. Doug Partee. 6'5 out of UCLA. Originally went to Dos Pueblos High School up in the Santa Barbara area. Smith serving. And the big jam by Vulo. It's played up. And Eric Hielo is blocked again. No wonder you were blocking him. He can't jump anymore. <laughs> He's not going to get the ball past uh, Doug Partee. He can jump Getting then, the ball this slowly cross court. Watch this. Nice set to the outside, and he's just getting roofed out there by Troy Tanner and Doug Partee again. And the shank out of bounds. Keep in mind, there are substitutes on the bench. Bill Massagero, I believe, has nine players suited up. Unless the other guy's a trainer or a massage therapist. They have about 100 people. Well, they bring him out if they need him. <laughs> Ball is blocked, and Saunders went under. So 
Il Massagero has the ball. Timmons will put the ball in play. And you look at the subs. There they are, the three substitutes. This year, you can go in and out, but under international rules, you can only do it once. So I'm sure we'll see some substituting, especially if Eric Hielo remains in the closet. You can't get the ball by the block. You know, I was thinking, Paul, uh, about Eric Hielo. Maybe he's just nervous because I'm here. <laughs> and he knows that he's been blocked by me. And it's and that's, an, that's a scary yeah. thought. Yeah, it's like deja vu coming back for him. It was in Denver. And a good look at number seven, Giovanni Eric Chielo. See if he can get going. 6-4 is our score. Coca-Cola has the lead. And Saunders jump serves it out of bounds. Interestingly, Saunders, a late replacement. He just played at the zone tournament for John Root, who pulled out. John Root coming off knee surgery. Dave Saunders, as a matter of fact, coming off of arthroscopic knee surgery. And a little bit farther ahead and ready to play. 6-5, game one. And Karch pokes it over. Tanner. And Tanner plays it up. Stetson. And the big block. So tapping it into the block was number two, Montanari. And the second stuff block credited to Troy Tanner. Coca-Cola doing an outstanding job blocking on their right side against the left side attack uh, of Il Massagero right now early. At this point, Coca-Cola seems like the more organized team. Now it's up to Il Massagero, especially Karch and Timmons, to assimilate the Italian four into that lineup. Some controversy as to was that an attack? Well, in, the, in the middle of the play, Bill Stetson attacked the ball. And uh, as he just indicated to everybody who will be, who listen, I'm front row, it's okay. Now, the head coach for Italy is up, and this is probably a first for Team Cup Volleyball. I don't think I've ever seen, well, they only have a coach in one match. But you can see the gang that they have on the bench. The and first coach, we'll, we'll get another shot of that for you, and we'll tell you exactly who's who on that gang. They got plenty of guys. And the ball is out. Now, the far end, that is one of the trainers. The head trainer is right next to him. The general manager is right there. The second assistant there, and the first head coach is Danielle Ricci inside. The owner technically is not here. I was kidding about that, asking him. He's watching it on his satellite dish, though. He's watching Prime Network right now. Four contacts and a point registered to Il Massagero. I would think, you made a good point, I think the Il Massagero players are tight as a drum right now. Big reputation. Uh, they're just starting their preseason training right now and get thrown in uh, to a very important competition in Los Angeles on television in the United States with a lot to prove. And indeed, their owner probably is watching on satellite TV, wherever he may be. And trying to figure out, can Il Massagero beat Coca-Cola? That is the question. 9-6. They dispatched everybody in Europe. That's for sure. Winning the championship. Now, Il Massagero with a chance for a point. Left side. Got it. A nice spike on the left side by Mombelli. And a point. So... The guys from Italy trying to figure it out. Who's in the front row and how many guys am I going to see up here? This is a real test of how much yeah. uh, Karch Curai and Steve Timmons have retained their Italian over the summer break. If you're wondering, both of them speak uh, pretty fairly well. good. Yeah. I think so. I, I think you're right. You learn the volleyball terms first. As Karch serves, 7-9. Will Messagero trailing Coca-Cola. Troy Tanner, who did play on the national team and won a gold medal in 1988, puts it away. So we have our first time out. Coca-Cola 10, Il Massagero 7. Back to the Great Western Forum after these very important messages. Stay with us. Chris Marlowe and Paul Sunderland back with you. Match number two. Paul Mitchell won the first match, but now Coca-Cola holding a three-point lead over Il Massagero. Coca-Cola with a starting lineup of Troy Tanner, Sinjin Smith, Bill Stetson is setting, and the front line, Parti, Tim Hovland, and Dave Saunders. Coca-Cola wearing the aqua shorts, Il Massagero in red. Double quick and the slam dink by Mambele. So Giovanni Mambele uh, gets the jam. 
And now serving will be number two, Montanari. He's from a little town called Chiete that is right near Rome. Nice pass by Smith. Hovland, who played in Italy for a couple of years, takes one off the dome. Saunders. Good dig by Eric Kaelin. Will they go to him? Oh, the ball goes right through Vulo's hands. Nice dig by Eric Yellow, and that's one of the most embarrassing things that can yes. happen to a setter, and he's a great young one. This is an exceptional dig. Perfect position. You dig the ball 9, 10, 12 feet off the net, and you in induce a facial on yourself. 11 to 8, Coke leads. Vulo, and Eric Yellow finds it through. So Eric Yellow gets a kill. He's been blocked a couple of times, has two kills. He might be their key outside hitter. They're going to need a stabilizing force. They're, you're going to be wondering about the rotation, the situation, the rules. Very, very different from the international game, speeding things up quite a bit. And you need somebody who can put the ball away on the outside. Bombelli serves the jumper out. Now, interestingly, a number of the Italians are using the jump serve, but in this point-for-play scoring, it's very costly. Well, they'll learn very quickly to put that away until the score is frozen at 27. Back set. A nice take by Bill Stetson. Vulo shoots it left, Timmons. And keep in mind, Steve Timmons is playing with a very sore shoulder. In fact, it kept him out in the last three or four beach tournaments. Well, he came back from the long Italian season, and on Il Messaggero, he plays opposite the setter, which means he gets about six out of every 10 sets. And then he came out on the beach and, and hurt himself uh, after a great couple of tournaments and uh, just had to just take it off in order to go rehab and get his shoulder strong and rest up for this coming season. There's Timmons. He is not going to play, I don't think, in any more beach tournaments. There are two more left, if you're wondering. There is one this weekend that uh, will be on live. Paul and I will be with you on that one as the ball is scooped up by Coca-Cola. Check your local listings, and that's that. Left side, Karai puts one. Goodbye. A couple of kills for Karch, which means king in Hungarian, if you're wondering, and he certainly has been the king of volleyball. But if that was ever an appropriate name that his father, Laszlo, yeah. chose yeah. about 30 years ago, that was it. Fabio Vulo does most of the setting for Karch's team, so uh, Karch very used to Vulo. Vulo's very tall for a setter. He's a giant. Well, and he's been with their national team for a long time, and how good is their national team? They're the defending national, like, should say, world champions. Italians ranked number one in the world right now. Timmons to serve. Steve Timmons married to the very lovely Jeannie Buss, who is the organizer and founder of Team Cup Volleyball. Mike uh, O'Hara is the commissioner, in case you're wondering. And there's a stuff by the Italians up high, the middle blocker, Montanari. I think Montanari, but also with some help from Karai assisting on the outside. I think Karch gets this one actually all by himself. Montanari there with the assist. 13 to 12, Il Massagero has never led. And inside goes Troy Tanner. So Troy Tanner in there, maybe for Mike Blanchard. Mike Blanchard could have been a starter. I'm, I was surprised he was not. He had such a great year last year, stays in exceptional shape, and was one of the top blockers in the league last year. How good was Blanchard last year? He had 21 blocks, which was fourth in the league. But he got here a little late. He wasn't even here for headshots. He, he has a chiropractic business, and he was doing a little massage work and didn't get here for the warm-up. He so was maybe adjusting that's why someone and couldn't get here. That's right. So his coach made an adjustment in the starting lineup, <laughs> and he wasn't in it. 15 to 13. Tim Hovland, one of the players in the front line. A lot of people forget that Tim Hovland played in Italy for a long time uh, in the late 70s, and one year was voted the most outstanding player in the Italian league, so 1985. Hov, very, very good in the indoor game. Ball punched out of bounds. Koch gets a point, so Montanari makes a hitting error, and the very underrated Bill Stetson to serve. He backed up Dusty Dvorak his first couple of years at USC and then came into his own. Dr. Bill Stetson now, an orthopedic surgeon, graduate from the USC Medical School. Really a fine, fine player. And calling the play, he did. That's right. He's looking for business. That's why he's out here. Oh! Eric 
Chielo, like he used to do to Paul Sunderland back in 1982. <laughs> Stuffing it never, down. Never, I used never. to tool that poor guy. I used to just rip his hands off. <laughs> a very nice play, so a slow start for Giovanni Eric Chielo, but he's coming on now. Timmons. And the ball stays in play. Vulo. Bad set. That's way off the net. But the ball kept in play. Here we go. Eric Hielo again. And it's rejected. Point Coca-Cola. That's a very good, solid wall. Troy Tanner, Tim Hovland, Doug Partee doing an exceptional job blocking right now against Eric Yellow, primarily on the outside. He's had a number of swings. Troy Tanner, who played collegiately at Pepperdine University under Marv Dunphy and Rod Weil. Boy, Eric Hielo getting a lot of work. Well, no back row hitting here. Yeah. And with Timmons eliminated from spiking from the back row because we've moved the three-meter line back to four meters, the left side hitters, like the days of old, are going to get a million sets. Stetson shooting it out to Saunders, and Saunders cranks it down the line. Dave Saunders has been a great player for a long, long time. Just recently uh, went back onto the national team to try to help the team win at the zone tournament. Didn't get a chance to play very much, Paul. There was a little speculation that he would play more in that uh, final match against Cuba, but he did not. They could have used his experience coming to the net here, showing you why he's back on the national team. On cue with Tim Hovland. Nobody fooled here. Mambelli's very, very late. Jumps high, but it's way late. You gotta be in the air before the ball's set. And a very nice block by Coca-Cola, Hovland, and Saunders. Vulo to Timmons. Oh, great spectacular up. It was Sinjin Smith. Timmons. Now he terminates. So Sinjin Smith, as he does so often, on the beach. And he's, you know, he played the whole summer with a bad wrist, but it not, it's not his left wrist. Well, and the wrist is even more at risk here playing on the hard surface. His right hand very, very badly injured. That's a bear, a terrible set. Going, going. Eric Kielo up and over. And yes, this is an important match. The bench scattered. Letting Eric Kielo have a chance at it. And timeout is called 20 to 17 when we return to the Great Western Forum. Stay with us. Chris Marlowe, Paul Sunderland, we are back. Coca-Cola leading Il Massagero. Karch Karai and Steve Timmons' team, 20 to 17. Coca-Cola has been consistently ahead by a couple of points. This is match number two of Great Western Team Cup Volleyball, the first night. That's trouble. And the ball put away. So some ball handling errors for Il Massagero, the first year that this team has played in Team Cup Volleyball, trying to sort it out. Maybe a little jet lag. Just flew in yesterday. Nine hours time difference. A little to jet Los lag. Angeles. <laughs> yeah. That used to be a killer for me. Biggest lead for Coca-Cola right now. Four points. And they're checking. And a hitting error. It's a back row violation. Troy Tanner is in the back row. So the officials, Ken Taylor and Wink Davenport, have got it figured out now who's where. Troy Tanner is a back row player. Team Cup rules. He can come to the net and block. Now, if he blocks that ball down instead of swings at it, spikes it, then it's a legal play. Big mistake. Maybe turn this game one around for Real Massagero. Definitely a two-point switch. As it was 21-17, now it is 21-18. And Dave Saunders will go from the left side. He's done this numerous times in Team Cup. You can serve from anywhere on the back line. Let's see if he jumps it. I wish this rule would come in international volleyball. Maybe one day. Good serve. And Karch terminates. That's the front line uh, via USA. Timmons hitting the quick and Karai hitting on the left side. Well, and I'd sure like to see it one more time in Barcelona in 1992. But again, Karai with a perfect pass. Timmons up early. And then that's all. Easy side out or in this format, a score. If you're wondering, a number of uh, players have committed to come back to the Olympic team. I think the sticking point might be Karch Karai. Steve Timmons has told me he is going to play, whether Karch plays or not, and I think everybody else is going to play. But the big question, will Karch play? Down the line goes Tanner. So Troy Tanner gets his fifth kill. Do you think Karch will play in the Olympics, Paul? Yes, I do. 
talked to him about it a couple of times recently, yeah. and he's non-committal, but yeah. he's a little bit softer in his response each and every time. I think he'll play. Little tap shot. And Karch. Play it up. Pulo. And Pulo with a great slam jam. And that play is only possible because of the good hard work, low position, and pass by Karch Kirai. Look at how Karch pays the dues, gets down low, good trajectory up to the net on the free ball pass. Vulo coming with the jumper, his team trailing by two. And that's one of the problems. I think uh, Karch and Steve will probably tell them, look, forget that jump serve until we get to the freeze point of 27. Well, you, don't, you don't want to miss a serve for two reasons. No. First and most importantly, if you miss it, it costs you a point. Secondly, you can block with four or five big guys. Serve the ball in the court, let your block and defense do the work. Stetson to serve. Karch gets the back set, a little off timing, and a nice stuff. I believe Hovland got his big hands up there. Hovland of Hovland and Dodd fame. He won two beach tournaments this year, both with Kent Steffes. Hov, an outstanding athlete. Does his hand get over the net? Not really. Back a little bit, but uh, able to get Karch on the high shot. Vulo shooting it left side, and inside the block goes Mambelli. So Giovanni Mambelli putting the ball away. His third kill. And trying to figure out the front line positioning. Four players can block, even five if you want. But then who plays defense? Karch. <laughs> He's back there now with Vulo. Tanner. And Tanner sneaks it inside. 25-21. The freeze point is 27. Then it's side out scoring. Tanner. Nice pass. Vulo. And a brilliant dink by Eric Kielo. So Eric Kielo has really turned it around. He's got a choppy little approach ball, little steps, but he gets the job done. Well, he passed the ball halfway to the three-point line if the basketball court was out here and had to completely cover that whole sideline of the court and get back in and hit. Pretty nice move. Smith Engine passing the ball perfectly. At the Saunders, blocked. Smith. And Smith punches it inside. So, Sinjin Smith, not a great indoor hitter. He's a fabulous hitter on the beach, percentage-wise, and moving the ball around. Doesn't he won't? You won't see him get blocked often in this match or throughout the course of the season. And he won't hit the ball out. He hits high and flat and doesn't make mistakes. 26-22. And a nice dig, but it's going out of bounds. So Smith had the wrist out. His wrist is very heavily taped. His right wrist, which had the torn ligament, very heavily taped. And it looks like the swelling has gone down a bit. The week of rest will help him. Until this weekend, when he starts playing on the beach once again, as we will in Orlando, Florida. But uh, I think that wrist hurt him a lot all season long. Two reasons. One, the injury. Then he took very heavy medication to reduce the inflammation. That caused him to become anemic. He got very, very weak, had a difficult time playing. And then it was very distracting because everybody was talking about it. Randy Stokos trying to do everything, possibly too much, and it really, I think, caused that long losing streak. Ball continuing to play, and Saunders! <laughs> Riding his wallet out of bounds, gets another point for Coca-Cola. Now Coke leading Il Massagero 28 to 23 here in game one. Dave Saunders and Doug Partee played together in Italy this year, and he's coming back strong, and even when he's sitting on his wallet. Back to the live it. action, Smith has it. A chance to go to 29, Saunders again! So Dave Saunders tearing it up, a last-minute replacement for John Roof. In fact, John Roof was on the cover of the Great Western Team Cup Volleyball Guide. Well, that was his goodbye card, I guess, because Dave Saunders has come in and come on strong, playing extremely well. One more look at the spiking of Dave Saunders. Oh, it has a great line shot. Great line shot, quick arm swing, and Steve Timmons knows it. Against Saunders, you've got to have your hands over. If you're the line blocker, you've got to seal. Saunders, uh, third last year in Team Cup as the head coach for Il Massagero, Danielle Ricci. <laughs> You get the tenor of his. It, well, in any not, language, it, yeah, he's mean, not out of control, but he's a little sense of urgency in his commands. Well, whether it's in English, Spanish, French, he said, "Come on, guys, let's go." Yep. 
They're just not putting out a great effort right here. Team Coca-Cola has a chance here to wrap up game one. Coke has been the more organized team so far. Bulo, great set and spike, dishing it off to Timmons. So Steve Timmons with his third kill. Remember last year, Timmons second in Team Cup with 23 blocks. He also had a pile of kills, 44. But playing with that injured arm is certainly going to limit his production. Now's the time for Il Massagero to use their jump serves after the freeze point. Saunders, and Saunders, did he get a touch? Yes. The linesmen, both of them correctly calling a touch. And nobody on Il Massagero uh, of the blocking participants complained. So Saunders will jump serve. This is the time, you said it, Paul, when it's side out scoring with the jumper. And Saunders has got a very good one going the opposite direction. A, a receive you don't get very often, even if you're Karch Karai. And Saunders trying to sneak it down the corner. 29-25 is our score. Timmons. And he'll back up and float long. Karch now blocking. Timmons will remain in the backcourt. And a little snap over the top by Troy Tanner. Oh, wait a second. Tanner went under, so that will be a point for Il Massagero. So Il Massagero closes to within three. Timmons continues to serve. Nice dig. Timmons chasing. Oh, he just can't get there over the railing. Let me correct the score for you. The correct score is 29-25. Coca-Cola, and now Mike Blanchard will come in to block. He is a blocking specialist. Good substitution here at game point, I think. You've still got very good ball control out there with Smith and Stetson, Troy Tanner, also good mobility, and the big blockers with Hovland and Blanchard. Vulo slam dinks again. So he has a fabulous dump shot. Fabio Vulo. As Coca-Cola will receive off the Vulo serve. He's from a town of Massa, Italy. Most of the players from small little town. Oh, he rips off a hard one. Stetson calling for the back row play. There's going to be arguing after this one, one way or the other. Timmons, and Timmons was in the back row. No mistake. Tanner, got it. Now, Karai, I believe, will point and I think this is a good play by Stetson because all he did was block and even though he's back row as long as he does not swing at the ball spike it yeah he can certainly but what's a block if you're three feet hey, off the net a block is blocking you know he went up with two hands and just pushed I thought it was a good play fourth game point could he do it from the 10-foot line got to be near the net I guess to block maybe. 29 25 a chance to win it right here no Il Massagero holding on so a good rotation now for Il Massagero is Bob Yoder, the head coach for Coca-Cola, trying to wrap up his first victory as a head coach. Do you remember yours, Paul? We'll get to that in a moment. Coca-Cola, blocked, should be a point right here. Vulo, and it is, so a big hit. Gianni Montanari, number two, he puts it away. Keep in mind that Coke had a six-point lead at 29-23. Three quick points for Il Massagero. Trying to come back. Good pass. Perfect every time. Tanner. Trying for 27. Yes. Eric Chiedo taps it through, and here they come. And there you see a very good coordination from a team that's played together for a long, long time. Eric Yalo and Fulo played together, obviously, with Il Massagero on the national team, screaming at one another, get the ball outside to me. So Bob Yoder, who is now in the construction business, along with Ernie Hicks. And let's go into the huddle and see if we can pick up uh, what's going on. That's coach talk, typical coach talk. <laughs> I'd be great in the mirror. Let's go, okay, okay. Speak generally, good don't criticize me. anybody. Bob Yoder, a fine head coach, but uh, just decided uh, perhaps a little more lucrative in the construction business than it is in the coaching business. 
got a wife uh, and a family. They live down in uh, Newport Beach, I believe. Three kids. Still a big USC fan. Must have been a little disappointed with the football school oh, this week. Boy. Okay, Il Massagero trying to catch up. Chris Marlowe with Paul Sunderland. Coca-Cola in Aqua. Il Massagero trying to catch up. Here they go. Fabio Vulo left side. Eric Yalo. Yeah! And Il Massagero is on fire. Another point. And the team from Italy is within one. Boy, they were down and nearly out, but a couple of nice blocks at the net. And Eric Yellow, in spite of getting off to a horrible start, has hung in there. Back set. Nobody there. Tanner. Oh, it's rejected back. Coke on the attack. Hotland. And a chance to tie. Eric Yellow against three. It's a horrible thing. Tanner. Got it. So, Karai and Timmons and company had a chance to tie it up, but Eric Yalo chose to deep. And now Coca-Cola with its fifth attempt at game point. Back set. Blocked. This could be it if Coke can block. They do, but they can't get it. Into the middle. Nice setting by Bulo. Very, very deceptive. Very impressed with him. When I saw him come to the Italian national team, he was just a young kid, but he's really, really progressed. Karai and company trying to tie it up. Saunders. A little pokey defense. Going to Hav. And this could tie it up. Eric Hale calling for it. He's got it. Can't do it yet, though. Stetson dishing to Saunders. It's up. Oh, right in the middle of the campfire defense. They have it everywhere in the world. Well, I'll tell you, but this one was up in the air a long, long time. Somebody out of that block should have turned and played this ball. Here it is, Paul. Classic it's campfire. One, two. I know we're in slow motion, but somebody, that ball's got to come up. So a couple of opportunities for Il Massagero. They had a swing and dinked, and they set up the campfire defense, which is not good. And that was to tie. Another match, make that game point. This is number six. And Eric Kahlo beats it hard. Boy, is he playing well now. Eric Kahlo now with seven kills. He has three digs and a block. Keep in the in first, first third of the game, he was in the closet. It's win by two, so Il Massagero must score another point to get into that mode. Jump serve. Oh, and he hits it out. So trying to get that jumper in. Just look tentative with it. If you're going to be tentative with a jump serve, down another game point. Just don't even serve it. Get the ball in the court. Another game point for Coca-Cola. Timmons beats it on the line. Everybody on Coke saying, hey, that was out of here. But Timmons spikes it home. Now, Il Massagero. The best club team in Italy this year. You're allowed two American players or two foreign players on your team. That's how they got Karch and Steve. Left side, Saunders sneaking it through. Dave Saunders, he grew up in the Pacific Palisades of California, went to UCLA, and then on to the national team. His 11th kill here in first game action. The eighth game point for Coke. And still no carbonation at the net. <laughs> and you can hear the Italian players, due, due, Karch. And, and Eric Yellow speaks very good English and, and, and talking quite a bit to Steve Timmons throughout the course of this match. Timmons serving. The ball slipping through the Il Massagero block. Sinjin Smith holding up very, very well right now, passing the ball. Only plays indoors once a year in Team Cup, passing extremely well right now. Partey once again serving for the game. Right side, Karch. And it could be a put away here. Hovland. It'll go to Karch on the jam. And we have controversy. It should be Karai's ball. It should be Karai's ball, yes. yes. Everybody's saying they did it. Who got it? This is, it's even in the rule book. Explain the rule, Paul. If, if the side of the net where the ball exits 
determines that the block pushed the ball If it's a joust. If it's a joust. The ball left the court on Kirai's side out of bounds. It should be Kirai's ball. The other guy is deemed to have touched it last. Exactly. This is in the rule book. This is an easy play to call. That's all I was waiting for. You didn't give me a signal, so I'm making the call. Here's the joust right here. Karch throwing it off the block and out of bounds. And I think a good call by Ken Taylor. It's on the joust. That's a good call. And Karai working off Tanner. And they even put this in the rule book because it was so impossible because of the simultaneous contact. They defined it in the rule book. So a big jousting play there. And Bob Yoder's Coca-Cola team lost the argument. As Il Massagero and Coca-Cola locked up here in game one. Paul Mitchell, Ricky Ludi's squad, already won. And Danielle Ricci, the head coach for Il Massagero, wants to get this game one if he can. Tanner has been a very, very effective hitter. Lots of options for Coca-Cola. Playing well in Kirai, very, very intense, as he always is, but uh, not in cruise control out here the first night of Team Cup. Tenth game point for Coca-Cola, and they have a good rotation. Their small setter, Bill Stetson, is in the back. He will serve. The big guys are up front. To wrap it up. No! Il Massagero, they have figured it out now, Paul. Well, they're passing, they're doing a couple of things. They're passing the ball extremely well, scoring out of their offense. Now that we're on the freeze point, they're siding out. They're also playing some good defense. They're just serving very, very easily. Off the chance, off the hands, chance to tie. And nobody there. Confusion. Stetson. Stetson. Tanner. Karch has it. Joust coming. Yeah! And over the top. A big time jam by Vulo. That's a great play by Vulo. Fabio just holding on to the ball, holding, waiting for the contact, knowing with his height and strength he could push it down inside. Six straight points for Il Massagero. Bob Yoder and his team, their lead has slipped away. It's win by two, however, as Karch serves it out of bounds. 29-29, game one. It's been a great one. One of the best I can remember in Team Cup. Well, I thought Il Messager was out of this game completely, uh, the deficit they faced late in this game. And there's a block. Coca-Cola regains the lead. Well, where was that one score in the previous 10 match points? 30 to 29. 11th chance for Coca-Cola. They'll kill themselves if they don't win it. Left side, Eric Chielo. This should be it. It could be it. Saunders. Yes, it is. So Coca-Cola finally pops it through. <laughs> it took them 11 chances. But Coca-Cola at last, Il Massagero. Can Karch's team come back? Well, he and Timmons will be fired up, ready for game two when we return. We welcome you back to the Great Western Forum, Great Western Team Cup Volleyball, a very hotly contested game one, 31-29. Uh, Coke outlasting Il Massagero. Chris Marlowe back with Paul Sunderland. Coca-Cola led. 30, no, make that 29 23, and then just fell apart. Il Massagero came back, but they couldn't hold them off. Well, Il Massagero was horrible in the beginning of this match. Eric Yellow, one of their key outside hitters, really in the closet. He came back. Kirai and Timmons, in Italian and English, explained the rules, but I thought that Saunders, Tanner, and St. John Smith passing were exceptional for Coca Cola. Il Massagero starting to get the feel of Team Cup volleyball, kind of figured it out. They have chemistry now. Do you think they can win game two? They can when they've got to eliminate some errors. And as we look at stats, the one thing they've got to eliminate, of course, is service errors. Here offensively, Il Massagero comes on late, but blocking, that's just a <laughs> horrible, horrible job for Il Massagero. Everything else pretty even except the last category. Hitting errors, if they eliminate errors and block a little bit better, they can come back and win game two. And they can't afford to make any bonehead plays where the guy forgets to be in the right place. Have they had one of those yet? Uh, a semi. semi. They're due. Maybe yeah. they're due. They had a semi. Okay, so Hovland and Coca-Cola lining up in aqua and beige. And Il Massagero, a team that has come over specifically from Europe. It's a 
Well, it is the premier club team in all of Europe. And you're allowed, once again, two foreigners on your team, Karch Karai and Steve Timmons, with their four Italian teammates. And Karch and Steve will talk it over at the start. What adjustments do you think, uh, Il Massagero? Will they dump the jump? They'll get rid of the jump serve. <laughs> I think so, certainly. And if not, they're making a big, big mistake. Karai and Timmons, I think, will... Uh, send the next guy down for a 10 count who serves the jump serve out of bounds. Well, we're going to get a chance early to see it. Yes, not. Vulo puts the ball in play, and Hovland terminates it. So Tim Hovland up very, very quickly. He was the big star in the 1980 championship team. Under coach Ernie Hicks. And he says, Tanner, come and get me on the right side. 1-0 Coca-Cola. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. When you started as a coach and a player in Team Cup, how long did it take your team to figure out the rules? About a match and a half. Okay. Yeah, it really did take a little while. Uh, you have to remember where you are and who's eligible to hit. And, and take you have to, one, there's two stages. One is to figure the game out, and two is to how to take advantage. You know, Timmons doesn't have his earring in his ear. No wonder he That's lost game problem. one. That's that is, the problem. That is definitely a problem. I wonder where it is. Smith, out of bounds. Another point for Il Massagero. So Il Massagero was playing very well at the end of game one. Can they continue it? We shall see. Timmons is all over Hovland in the middle. Great Ulo. set. Boy, bumped it backwards, but Stetson has it. Saunders. And Karch saves it, but it's going outside the antenna. And Karch has got to be wondering why none of the blockers, yeah. who are about 20 feet closer to the ball, even tried for this play. Look at Karch. The ball goes right over here next to Mombelli, and here comes Karch. Sure, he's got a better view, but nobody's going aggressively after the ball. Three blockers with a case of the cement feet that time. you got to go. If it's off your hands and up, you naturally go to where the ball is going. In the quick set, and the attack of Il Massagero now starting to uh, provide points off Hovland. For Montanari, that's his sixth kill. Pretty good balance. Eric Chielo has seven kills, the most for Il Massagero. Smith. And did Smith get the touch? Yes. It's a micro yes. touch. Boy, on a set like that, I'm, I'm not even sure you want to block Sinjin. He's so far back, he's hitting high flat. And I think Karch, Kirai, and Timmons should tell their teammates exactly that, because all he's doing is aiming at the top of the block in that situation. And a big hit, right side down the line. See how good Vulo is moving the ball around. Jeff Stork in the United States, considered by most people and considered by me the best setter in the world, but Vulo is right there as well. Mombelli got the kill, his fifth. Ball is blocked back by Eric Chielo. If you're wondering where Jeff Stork is, why isn't he playing in Team Cup this year? Well, he prepared a lot for the North American Zone Tournament and did not make it down. The Zone Tournament only concluding uh, a couple of nights ago. In fact, I believe Saunders and Buck just made it here, but Stork choosing not to play this year. He was physically worn out from the long season and the zone. Well, he played in Italy as well. Also here, he just bought a big spread up outside Seattle and had to uh, close on that right after the zone. So uh, a lot of things uh, on Jeff Stork's plate. Six fours are score. And once again, Fabio Lulo with the jam. He's 6'6", if you're wondering. He's a little taller than Timmons, actually. His fourth kill. And he towers over Stetson. You see Stetson there. Stetson's lucky if he's 5'11". Of course, height not really important when you're consulting a doctor, so it really doesn't make much difference. <laughs> but it is if you set the volleyball for a living. If, is he short? Is he tall? Who cares? Does he have good hands? He's not going to cut me open and uh, leave me there. 8-4. Neil Massager off to a good start, playing with confidence. Partee, who's hardly got any action in the middle so far. See if they go to him again. Yeah. What? Vulo blocking middle here. And the ball turned right on the line. Troy Tanner has been so effective from the right, and Saunders, his counterpart on the left. I think they're a very, very good balance, and uh, Bob Yoder has decided to go with a small Coca-Cola lineup. Again, Mike Blanchard so effective last year. Not seen much action so far tonight. 8-5 is our score. And once again, wide open in the middle. 
Bobby Ogulo with the dump. Well, he can actually dump the ball over the net and down, standing on his tiptoes, so he can really disguise that until the very last microsecond. Perfect passing by El Massagero, Eric Yellow and Kirai. 9-5 is our score. Right into the bottom of the net goes Timmons. That will cost his team a point. Well, that was an awful serve. Just the first night of Great Western Team Cup Volleyball. If you happen to be in the Los Angeles area, you should come out and see this. A chance to see all the great players uh, for the United States on the beach and indoor in one setting. Two big matches a night. Come out here if you can. If you can't, you can watch it live right here on the Prime Network. We're going to continue with our coverage. More volleyball coming up after these messages. Stay with us. We welcome you back to the Great Western Forum. Perhaps the greatest beach volleyball player of all time, Sinjin Smith. He's won the most tournaments. Uh, what did he think about his season on the beach? Well, it's not quite over yet, but these are his thoughts. I think overall, Randy and I did pretty well. We finished on top uh, money-wise and the number of tournaments won. Uh, but I had a few problems in the middle of the year, and it, and it really slowed me down. I know we could have come out better, but I have to look at it as a positive season for us. Well, certainly a positive cash flow. He and Randy Stoklos winning $250,000 so far. That's positive. I think they had an exceptional year. Sinjin's now 34 years old, played injured all season long, and he's played 15 straight seasons without ever missing a tournament due to injury. And I think Tim Hovland, who just put that ball away in the middle, has the same record over 13 seasons. So a couple of very talented, very tough players. They can't afford to miss a tournament these days. As, they can afford to miss a tournament. Well, occasionally. Troy Tanner serving. Il Massagero's in red. The other team is Coca-Cola. And the Italians starting to talk a little trash under the net. Well, the Italians have never been quiet. Yeah. Karch Kirai talked about the fans, and I would imagine the players whoop it up as well. There is the slam dink. 11 to 7. I like talking trash. I like it when the teams do that. There they go. Another big block for Il Massagero. And this is the team we expected to see. Can you imagine when Il Massagero plays the team from Panini and there are 12,000 people in the stands and everybody's screaming and yelling on every play? Karch said he, one thing he learned right away in Italy was never, now that he is a high-level, highly visible professional athlete, don't read the newspapers, don't listen to the radio because they are so critical over there. Yeah. Uh, it just drives you crazy. Now he knows what uh, football, basketball, and baseball players feel like here. Vulo dishes backwards as play continues. Got to stay down on this. Not yet. For contact, Il Massagero has a head of steam. Coca-Cola needs a timeout right now. Put a little fizz back in its game, and uh, Bob Yoder going to do exactly that. Okay, so Coca-Cola going plop, plop at the moment. 14 to 7 is our score. Il Massagero up by 7. Coca-Cola won game 1, 31-29. If you missed the first match, you joined us late. Ricky Ludes and Team Paul Mitchell defeated Team Toyota 30-28, 30-28. So... Paul Mitchell uh, with Ludies and Buck uh, played very well there. 1-0 and in league now. Team Toyota 0-1. And, and Il Massagero led by two of the great players in the world. Karch Karai and Steve Timmons uh, trying to get a victory. There's pressure on Karch and Steve, don't you think? Well, exactly. We talked about the pressure on uh, the Il Massagero team, but, yeah. but they now uh, take a lot of pride in their performance anywhere in the world of uh, volleyball and now they've gone over and accomplished a great deal they want to bring their team back to the united states and show people the level of play overseas just now a lot of hitting errors here for coca-cola in game two in game one coke only made four hitting errors il Massagero had 10. in this game coke has seven hitting errors already so sinja smith going to check out for a moment and the blocking specialist mike blanchard into the front line he also went to pepperdine and played on the 1978 championship team. I don't mind the substitution, but I don't understand the timing. Blanchard is a, a back row player at this point in time, if I'm not mistaken. You need Smith in there to pass. Well, perhaps a mistake uh, by Coach Bob Yoder. It pays off, though. Just like to remind you for your prime ticket viewers only, stay tuned for Press Box immediately following volleyball here on the Prime Ticket Network. That's Press Box coming up immediately following the conclusion of this match. 
And the ball spiked out of bounds. We could hear Dave Saunders after covering that dink, demanding the ball to the outside. Good choice going to Partee, but he hits it wide. 15 to nine is our score. Il Messaggio has the lead. Saunders, it carts with a dig. Il Messaggio pumping now, going for number 16 and a double contact. That might have been a triple or a quadruple. Boy, you have to really throw it badly to he get did. a call in Team Cup. Usually you can mangle it pretty good. And Blanchard will serve. And Blanchard will also run to the net and block. He'll follow it in and join the party. Timmons snaps it down. So Timmons comes over and gives five to the umpire, Wink Davenport. I don't think I've ever seen that. I've seen Hoblin spit on an umpire <laughs> to try to fight him or have him wipe his sunglasses off. Keep right. it going here. Keep no. it going. There's the kill. And you know, the best part of it is Wink's ready there to be there on the receiving end. <laughs> he says, I know how to do that. Wink played on the 1968 Olympic team. One of the most famous U.S. Olympic teams, the one that first beat the Soviet Union in international play. And Il Messagero has just completely turned it around. Paul, why? Well, just gotten over their jitters. Maybe uh, sweat the jet lag out just a little bit. Kirai and Timmons uh, pointing out some of the tendencies of the opposition. But more than anything else, they're just working well together and blocking an awful lot of balls right now. This is match two. Il Massagero serving. Five stuff blocks so far in game two. And down goes Stetson. The floor is wet. Coca-Cola has to be careful here. Vulo, left side. Timmons. Vulo. Oh, great shot again. Fabio Vulo, he's just seeing it open up back there. Well, how many kills does Vulo have now? He has got seven all together, four in this game, and all of them are the dump variety. And one thing I think he sees, with four blockers up, only two defenders, there is a hole in the middle of the defense. And it, there's a hole short, and there's a hole deep. Sometimes the defenders on the wing start creeping in. You just throw the ball to the back line, nobody there. 19 to 10, Il Massagero pounding Coca-Cola right now. Make it 20 to 10. A lot of this has happened, too, since Sinjin Smith went to the sideline. They need him back in here passing the ball. So some shanking going on for Coca-Cola. 20 to 10, Il Massagero has the lead in game. Two. We're back. Chris Marlowe, along with my partner, Paul Sunderland. Coca-Cola won game one, but Coke getting rubbed out here in game two, 20 to 10. One of the big factors, Sinjin Smith went out of the game, and since then, his team, there's Sinjin resting on the sideline, but a change in uh, team format here for Bob Yoder, and they've been shanking the ball all over. The chemistry not as good right now. Well, I think you've got to get Sinjin back out there. He's got great confidence, takes up a lot of the court receiving, and passes with great accuracy. Oh, and the ball goes right past Montanari. Someone took a swing at it, Carts and it Kirai surprised came him. flying in and took a swing, and Montanari's got to follow through and make that play. Stetson directing traffic as Saunders sets the serve. 20 to 11. Point per play scoring once again in Team Cup. Vulo faked everybody out, but a good touch on the block as Tanner drills it inside. So Vulo now faking the dump and trying to dish it off to Timmons, but you can really see that Timmons is not 100% swinging at the ball. Normally that would have been straight down no, and straight up. No, this is up. very much preseason for him. He's not going to let it all hang loose out here and risk all of next season with his shoulder. Tanner is stuffed. But he can still block. He certainly can. Fabio Vulo and Timmons, big, a big wall at the net. Karch Kirai said that Vulo is the best blocker. Look at him get up and over the net of any setter playing professionally in Europe today, and he shows it to you right there. Eric Cielo trying to put a little steam on his serve, a serving error there. 21 to 13. Timmons. And Timmons can't connect, so it's a point for Coca-Cola. Twenty-one to fourteen. 
If you're wondering if the players on Coca-Cola know that Timmons has a sore arm, you bet they do. Sure, they all know. All play against him on the beach, and they're very aware that he can't bring it with the same kind of heat that he normally does. Stetson, the doctor, turning and squirming, trying to poke that ball up. Could not do it. That was the doc to doc. Mike Blanchard, the chiropractor, Bill Stetson, the orthopedic surgeon, and... Uh, a lot of intelligence on that play, just not much reaction time. I tell you, if someone gets hurt out here, we are sufficiently prepared. We're covered. We're covered. What kind of surgeon is Stetson? Orthopedic surgeon. All right. We got a chiropractor. And a lot of volleyball players as Tanner thunders one through. Well, Eric Yellow got airborne in the back row and uh, his timing really off defensively, wondering, what am I doing out here? Easy play off the top of the block, really. A couple of missed dig opportunities for Il Massagero. Five of the last six points uh, for Coca-Cola as they start to come on. And Bulo is jammed, so a bad pass, and here comes Coca-Cola. Well, I thought Mas Il Massagero was looking very, very comfortable there. Coach, got to be thinking about taking a timeout here soon. A lead of six. Good pass. Play action, left side, Karch. He's against three, however, and Coke has another chance for a point. Tanner, who's been hot. And right back over the net. Free ball. Should be a point. Nope. Hovland dishes. And Tanner is rejected. So Tanner trying to put down his 14th kill. Could not do it. And Steve Timmons and Il Massagero block getting in the right spot. Difference in this game, clearly the blocking of Il Massagero. They're not handling the ball that well in transition, as evidenced by the bump set that turned out to be a free ball for Coke, but they're blocking, bailing them out. Good pass. Stetson on the combo to Hovland, and Hovland rips it. He just had another little baby, Hunter Hovland, to go along with Tara. I think I saw his wife Pam here tonight. She is here. So they're very, very happy. So far, Il Massagero, as you said, Paul, seven blocks here in game two. That's been a big, big difference as Karch thunks it through. How's Karai doing? King of the world, eight kills for Karai, one block. How about Timmons offensively? I'll bet very, very quiet. Uh, five kills, not so bad. Saunders off the face of Mombelli. You've got to get over early. Start way outside against Dave Saunders and work your way back inside. Otherwise, with that quick arm swing, he's going to beat you every time. Saunders has 14 kills, 24 to 18. A six-point lead as Koch tries to catch up. Opposite scenario of game one. Bulo and Eric Kielo puts it away off party. So Eric Kielo has now eight kills. He is tied with Karai for the lead. And it looks like a float serve coming. Off the bat of Montanari. Good one. There's a good set. And Saunders hits it out of bounds. So Il Massagero finally gets off the dreaded 25, now to 26. And we're close to the freeze at 27. That's when side out scoring first starts. Blanchard. Free ball. Here they come. Coke. Nice blocking by Timmons in the middle. Saunders, Timmons right there reading his buddy. Left. And Eric Kielo thunders it away. Excellent teamwork by Il Massagero. They played all season together. Just the beginning of this season, coming over to train together, covered the dink easily. Good transition play on the outside. Yes, it's hot inside the Great Western Forum, especially for that man, Bob Yoder. His team trailing right now in game two. 27 to 18. However, Yoder's team did win game one. So we might go to the tiebreaker third game. It's a possibility. Good pass. Stetson rejected. Timmons waiting on Blanchard. And uh, this lineup has not looked too good for Coca-Cola. Four blocks for Big Red, number six, Steve Timmons. Again, very sore shoulder. Can't hit the ball as hard as he would like or as quickly, but uh, not affecting his blocking. Going over the net was Mombelli. You can't block the set in any kind of volleyball. And now both teams are frozen. 28-19, our stat man tonight, the very capable Joel Farbstein. Chance for a point. And Saunders gets it. 
Sounders so adjustable as a hitter. If he gets a lousy set or a good set, he still makes do with it. Well, two reasons. We talked about the arm swing, but second, he waits on his approach. A lot of young players commit. They start to come in before the ball is actually set. They can't make the good adjustments in their approach. Eric Chielo again. And Coca-Cola out of position. Nine kills for Giovanni. Make that ten now with that one. Giovanni Eric Chielo. didn't really list uh, the ages. How old would you say Eric Chielo is? He has to be 35, don't you think? I don't think he's quite that old, but uh, uh, certainly uh, in that neighborhood. I'll bet he's 32, 33. Another point for Il Massagero. Timmons squad now with game point here in game number two. And Partee puts it away. He's been kind of, uh, well, he's been the decoy. <laughs> Only three kills for Doug Partee. And I think that's a big indicator. Uh, Bill Stetson's got to get the ball to Partee in the middle with much greater frequency to free up the outside. Saunders serving. And Vulo with the jam. And Hobb can't snap it over. Vulo is so big yes. and so smart on the tight plays at the net that you pass the ball five feet over the net. He just goes up and saves the play for you. Second game point for Il Massagero. And Partee hits it out of bounds. So perhaps the timing not there between Bill Stetson and Doug Partee. And it costs Coke here in game two. So now we're tied at one game apiece. We're coming back for game three. More Great Western Team Cup Volleyball is coming at you. So stay right where you are. Coca-Cola one game one, 31-29. Il Massagero one game two, 30 to 20. We get set for play in game three. Chris Marlowe and Paul Sunderland and Il Massagero did it by turning on the heat on Coca-Cola. Well, they did it particularly in the blocking category. Offense pretty even, but in game number two, they outblocked Coca-Cola nine to one. That was the difference. Offense, service aces, not a big factor. Hitting errors, huge for Coca-Cola, and I think you've got that number. 14 hitting errors for Coke in that game. No way you're going to win, particularly in this scoring format. Keep in mind, those are stats cumulative after two games. So Coca-Cola, out of 18 hitting errors, had 14 in that game. So let's check the lineup now quickly for Il Massagero. The same starting lineup for Coca-Cola. Sinjin Smith is back in. So they're going back to the lineup that won them game one. And sitting down on the bench now is Mike Blanchard. So if this is going to be quick scoring, point per play until 10, freeze at 10, must win by two, but at 10, you must serve to score the final point. Il Messagero in red, and Coca-Cola in beige and aqua. So this should go very quickly. Nice dig, Karch keeps it in play. Smith, and they'll go to Karch again, won't they? Yes, three on him. He's blocked. Big opening point here. Go to Karch again, yep. Oh, he's dug by Smith. Great point to start this final game. A la AVP Pro Beach Volleyball. Back set, blocked out, Il Massagero scores. Excellent, excellent point to start game three. One nothing is our score. If you just tuned in, uh, keep in mind for prime ticket viewers, stay tuned for press box immediately following volleyball. We'll go right to press box for you. So stay with us. This is the final game of our doubleheader match tonight. Il Massagero and Coca-Cola. The best of the beach and the best indoor players in the world competing in Team Cup Volleyball. Point per play scoring game three. Il Massagero again blocking the improvement of the latter stages of game two and the beginning of game three, the story here. Timmons really turning it on. Off the hands, nice dig. Chance for another point. Karch, got it! Not a very good set by Vulo, kind of spun it there to the outside. Kirai now with his ninth kill down the line. Bob Yoder gonna take a quick timeout for Coca-Cola here early in game three. Three to nothing is our score. More live volleyball, the conclusion of this match in Great Western Team Cup Volleyball after this.
Chris Marlowe and Paul Sunderland with you. First night of Great Western Team Cup Volleyball. Il Massagero, Karch Karai and Steve Timmons and company. The Italians imported from Italy to play in Team Cup Volleyball. And after a slow start in game one, Il Massagero and Red took control in game two, winning that one, and now have assumed a big lead, 4-0, this game just to 11 points. Well, any confusion that Il Massagero might have suffered with regard to the unique rules for Team Cup is all over because they're blocking the ball very, very well right now. Big block up and another defensive play. Karch to go to five. Got it! So Karai and company now turning the screws on Coca-Cola. Ten kills for Karch. Eric Yellow really been very, very strong the last game and a half. Got off to a terrible start, been good lately, particularly on defense. Coca-Cola in deep trouble now because we're only playing to 11. Third and final game of the night. Tanner to Smith. That's trouble. Pretty good jam and the topping by Tim Hovland. So Hovland gets a point for his team. Five kills for the Hov. And Troy Tanner will serve. It's a very quick game. Il Massagero has to stay on top. They got to score with their offense right now to give this lead up very quickly. Troy Tanner has been a big gun. He has 13 kills, second to Dave Saunders with 15. There's the head coach for Il Massagero, Daniel Ricci. Il Massagero sending its team out here to compete in Team Cup Volleyball, a first, an international squad. They have Karch and Steve with them. They're two foreigners. Karch and Smith digs in. Tanner. Tanner cannot swing, so he puts it in play. Left side dink. Carty has it, but still no spiker. Oh, it goes over. And the ball kept in play. Should be a scoring play right here. No, it's not. And a horrible free ball pass gives Il Massagero another point. Well, that might have been the backbreaker right there. Dave Saunders in good position, has tremendous ball control, and this is a terrible error given a free ball back to Il Massagero for the score. Il Massagero by five. Smith's team trails. Left side, Saunders. Oh, spectacular dig by Eric Chielo. And he terminates off the hand. So Eric Chielo has been the hitting star for Il Massagero. His sixth dig. He got another kill, and Bob Yoder, the former USC coach, takes his second timeout. Eric Yellow has been the difference in this game. Timmons turning it on, blocking. Again, the injured shoulder. He can't really do it from the offensive side of things. Eric Yellow on defense, exceptional. Okay, we're playing to 11. Il Massagero is closing in on its first win of the season as they are just four points away from wrapping it up. Seven to one is our score. We'd like to remind you that Prime Network has presented Team Cup Volleyball, brought to you by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong, and by your Southern California Honda dealers, as dependable as the cars they sell. Once again, a reminder, Press Box with Larry Burnett and Alan Massingale coming up following volleyball. Just moments away, so stay with us. Il Massagero leading Coca-Cola. Perfect pass. And an offset and a big stuff. In the middle, number two, Gianni Montanari, who has been solid. Montanari, now. not big by world-class standards as a middle blocker, 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, Excellent technique getting over the net. Massagero dominating here. 8-1, three points away from wrapping it up. And another kill. So Il Massagero now with nine points. Don't forget, we have more Team Cup Volleyball coming up September 10th, September 11th, and then the championship finals will be September 13th. All of those are live right here on the Prime Network. If you can get out to the Great Western Forum, you're in the Los Angeles area, come out and see your favorite players. It should be good. Il Massagero just torturing now. Coca-Cola leading 9-2. There will be a freeze at 10, and then Il Massagero will have to serve to win the match. Down the line. So now Il Massagero has 10 and just one point away from wrapping up this match. 
Montanari will serve. This is for the match. First match point for Il Massagero. Blanchard. And Blanchard hits it out and it's over. So Il Massagero and a very relieved coach. Daniel Ricci, his team fell behind. Losing game one. And then coming back to win uh, the next couple of games. And that will do it for tonight. Team Paul Mitchell won, and also Il Massagero for Paul Sunderland. I'm Chris Marlowe. Let's now join Larry Burnett and Alan Massingale in the press box.